Hello. In this video, we will learn about arrays in Java and cover some important short questions that can be asked on arrays. You have learned how to declare and use variables in a program. If we had three subject marks, we declare three variables and use each of them separately. Now, if you have five or more students whose data need to be processed, you need maybe five into three variables. Due to this, the input and processing becomes complicated. And if there are thousand students, how would we declare and handle so many variables? That's where Java has arrays. They help to store multiple values under a single variable name instead of declaring separate variables for each value to handle large volume of data. Array can contain elements of same data type only. So you can have array of primitive types such as int, float, char or any reference data type like objects of classes such as string. For example, you can have an integer array of marks or string array of student name etc. Data is stored in array in contiguous location for primitive types. Array has a fixed size and is also an object in Java. Let's learn how to declare, create, initialize and access an array. To declare an array, we first give the data type like int, float to tell the compiler what kind of value will be stored and then give the name of the array. Now you can put a square bracket either before or after array name, both are valid. If you put only one, it means it is a single dimensional array. If you put two, means it is a two dimensional array and it can store a matrix kind of structure and so on. For the moment, we will focus only on single dimensional array. Now this is just declaration. We still have not created or instantiated the array. There are two ways you can do that. One is static and other is dynamic. In static, you assign the values to array directly. Like here, the marks of five subjects are directly assigned and it automatically gives the array a size of five. Second method is where during runtime, you use the new operator to assign space for the array. Here, you have to specify what is the size of the array. Since array is an object, it has a length member variable which gives us the length of the array. Now let's learn what is index. Index or subscript of an array is the location of a value in a particular array. In arrays, the index or subscript starts with 0. Since our array size is 5, note that the subscript or index run from 0 to 4 which is 1 less than 5 or length of the array. We use indexes to access each element of the array. So when we give mark 0 equal to 50, then it will give 50. Also if you try to access a member beyond the array size, it will give array index out of bound exception. Let's see how we will use indexes in combination with looping construct like for to access the entire array. Assuming we have this array, we can use for loop to set up a counter starting with 0 as array index starts with 0. This loop will run till less than array length. We use less than over here because last array index is 1 less than the array length. This is incremented by 1 for each iteration. Within this loop, we can put a println statement with array name and index to access all the array values. This for loop is standard and can be used for any purpose to iterate through the array. Like it can also be set up for initialization too if you are taking an input from the user by using let's say scanner class. For example, here we have a loop set up of 10 so we are taking in names of 10 students and their marks. This will be the usual input routine you will use in your program. Now let's see different types of short questions 
that can be asked on arrays. One of the typical question that is asked is what is the size of the array or how many locations are reserved for the array. Like for example here, here first you need to recall how many bytes each data type takes. If you see here, int and float takes 4 bytes, long and double take 8, char takes 2 bytes, etc. Remember this table for exam and then start answering the question. Here in the first question, there is an array of int of size 25, so it will take 100 bytes of space. Next is float which also requires 4 bytes, so it takes 4 into 12 which is 48 bytes of space. Next is double array of size 5. Since double takes 8 bytes, this array takes up 40 bytes. In the next question, each char takes 2 bytes, so array of 20 takes in 40 bytes. Next kind of question that is typically asked is where you have to find errors in the program statement and correct them. Before I solve them, you can pause here and see how many errors you are able to find. In the first statement, a static array is declared. So what is the error? Here the array size is declared on left hand side, which is incorrect. Only variable declaration need to be here, so we will correct it by removing 10. In the next statement, again a static array is defined. Here the error is that the variable declared is not an array of string, it is just string x. So we will add square brackets either before or after x. In the next question, what is the error? Here the array is declared of char, but the values in arrays are not in single quotes. So we need to put quotes to ensure right value are assigned. Last one is a small program snippet of three lines with multiple errors in it. Here in error declaration, first error is that the size is mentioned and they are in quotes which needs to be removed. Second, a comma is missing between 6 and 2. Next in the program, the index needs to start from 0 instead of 1. Next in the print statement, instead of just x, we need to call it with index to print all numbers in the array. Next kind of questions are where you are asked to write Java statements like for the following. Before I solve them, you can pause the video here and see how many you are able to solve yourself. Here in first one, you just need to initialize the first element. You do not need to declare array as that is not asked. So we will just write a index 0 is equal to 25. Next we will create a static array ARR and initialize its value to 65, 66 and 67 in curly braces. Next we need to write an expression in if statement. Here element at column 5 means element at index 4. So the statement is if x within brackets 4 percent 2 equal to equal to 0. This is our check for even numbers. Next we need to create a boolean array let's say b and initialize it to values of true, false, true, true which we will put in curly braces. Do not forget to put a semicolon at the end of all of these statements. Next type of questions are where a array is given and your knowledge of indexes is evaluated. Before I solve them, you can pause here and see how many you are able to answer yourself. First question is where you are asked the indexes of the array. Here you have to give from 0 to 7 and not 8 as index is 1 less than the size of the array. Next question is what is the length of the array? That is the size of the array so it is 8. Next question is what is the fourth element? Here you need to read carefully if they are asking fourth element or element at fourth index. If the question is element, you will start your count from 1 and return the fourth which is 32 here. If you see the next question, 
here they are asking for element at second and fourth index so we will write our print statement with arr2 and arr6 which will give us 41 and 75 respectively next type of question which are very important are arrays with loop kind of question and you are asked to predict the output like what is the output of this program here the array has five elements the loop is set from index 3 to 5 so it will execute for two times for values 3 and 4 within the loop there is print statement so it will print element at index 3 which is minus 2 first with space and then in the next iteration of loop it will print element at index 4 which is minus 1 with space this is the output of the program let's see another program where you have to give the output here let's see what the program is doing there is a double array of size 5 then a loop is set up for 5 iterations in the loop each element of the array is initialized the value of index j which is from 0 to 4 then the array is printed so you think it will print 0 to 4 in a single straight line no it is double array so it will print 0.0, .0 then 1.0 2.0 3.0 and then 4.0 in all such questions pay attention to what data type you are printing and then print accordingly in our next video we will cover some important programs that are asked on array thank you and goodbye